B5.js is it's a library. A technical toolkit based on JavaScript um, uh, that is reinterpreting the philosophy of processing. So people who come to code from art often have different expectations and different desires than people who started off being programmers and processing originally was a tool to make it easy for people to do that. It's really this fusion of art and technology that anyone can use. There were some tools like this similar for other environments so you could make something just on your computer, but it was really hard to share that with anyone else. And so uh, I felt it was really important that you should be able to make things and then share it uh, with the world. Well, there's a huge range of different people at the conference. There's artists, designers, educators, people who are working on improving the diversity of the project, community outreach, and so it's people who come from all different backgrounds really working together to make it awesome. <laughs> it's a group of people who are mostly in at the Studio for Creative Inquiry right now, but um, volunteers and um, artists and engineers. Um, yeah, I think the, the idea here is that it's actually uh, kind of an alternative to some proprietary software like Adobe products, for example. So the end goal is not a, a fantastic, spectacular software, but more of a growing community of people who support each other. It's for artists. <laughs> Everyone from young children to adults and advanced programmers and kind of everything in between. I think for me it's really important because it's an open source community where I feel welcome um, and that's not the case everywhere so. Educators use it to help teach art students to program, to introduce them to programming to begin with and in that way it's a very school focused tool but it's also just used by other new media artists um, who want to get drawings up quickly basically. Uh, so this week we are having our very first P5JS Contributors Conference. Uh, which means we've had we have a group of about 35 people that have come from uh, as far away as China. Yeah, a whole bunch of contri so it's a contributors conference. So a whole bunch of people who like to work on P5JS in their spare time or sometimes as part of their jobs. Um, but also things like thinking about the community and thinking about how we reach more people, who how we want to kind of represent the community and the. Um, inclusiveness that we hope to foster with this tool. So we've been doing everything from, um, you know, code sprints where we're just writing a lot of code to having panel discussions and having sort of a conference aspect where people share their perspectives on these issues. And from my experience, it has been a lot of um, small collaboration and building a foundation for longer term collaboration in the future. So I'm a new media artist, uh, and the way I make my work is by writing code to make art. And I'm part of um, a small but growing community of other artists who also have this kind of double mindset where we've got one foot in the arts and one foot in computer science and other kinds of computational technologies. And it's a real challenge to put these together in a way where you can create poetic work uh, using this very brittle and highly technical medium. And I, I really feel that the needs of artists have been incredibly poorly addressed by the commercial space. And so there aren't tools that people can just buy in order to make interactive art, computational design, information visualization. And a really important thing that's happened over the last 10 to 15 years is that artists and designers who are able to code have taken this matter into their own hands and sort of lofted by the open source movement in software, they've created arts engineering toolkits which allow themselves and other artists and designers in order to make interactive art and computational design on the web and in installations all around the world. The number of people who maintain or who create and maintain these toolkits is incredibly small. Even though the number of people who use them is large and sometimes numbering in the, in the, in the tens or even hundreds of thousands. So they're very vulnerable. Um, and any amount of support that we can do to bolster the strength of these arts engineering toolkits, these free open source toolkits that help people make art, okay, you know, has a huge impact. Um, and every dollar spent on supporting these tools um, goes back into the commons and into you know, the, the, the population of new media artists a hundredfold. We are making a tool that is empowering artists to uh, to kind of make more art. And so every hour that we put into this is actually, you know, 
going to be multiplied by the number of people that take this tool and make something else out of it. So not only are we making our own art and our own experiments here, but we're making something that can be um, used by you know the whole world and um, used in a lot of different ways and, and built upon.